I'd like to call the 25th regular meeting of the 2017-18 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Don't wait for the right opportunity, create it. Thank you. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are 13 present. All the persons bidders and Lewandowski are excused. All the person Ballinger is not excused. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 4.1 and 4.5 are resignations. I'll turn it over to the city attorney. 1.4 is a resignation by Henry Nelson, submitting his resignation from the Mead Public Library Board of Trustees, effective March 23, 2018. And 1.5 is a resignation uh, from Pete Fullerton, submitting his resignation from the City of Sheboygan Board of Review, effective March 22, 2018. Thank you. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion uh, to accept and file both 1.4 and 1.5. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Next is public forum. City Clerk. There is no one tonight. Thank you. Uh, next we'll move on. Uh, is a, it's a presentation by Alderperson Susan Holshue on the Sheboygan County opiate problem. Susan's been uh, researching this for the better part of a year and a half to two years, and she's got some very important information to share with us today. And you should have uh, a packet on your desk uh, with the information as well. Thank you all who helped me get the information I'm about to present, and thank you for, me, for allowing me to present it. This is an uncomfortable topic. <clears throat> this is a topic with no defined course of action to prevent it, but to eliminate it. What I'm going to share with you today are the end results of polysubstance toxicity, heroin, fentanyl, and cocaine addiction in Sheboygan County. My report is on the deaths due to that epidemic. Do the PowerPoint. I'm at a disadvantage. I don't know which one's up there. Oh, okay. The mentally and behavior of drug addicts and alcoholics is wholly irrational until you understand that they are completely powerless over their addiction unless they have structured help. They have no hope. And that's a quote from Russell Brand. <clears throat> Next slide. Not all deaths are investigated by the medical examiner. Just a few. And this sheet of information tells you which ones the coroner looks into. The county has a list of all the deaths. And this is the reasons why the coroner would do an autopsy. I can read each of those, but I think you can read them. That isn't as important as the rest of the information. <clears throat> Sheboygan County Death Investigation from 2008 till March 15th of 2018. I started this report when we started to have the ambulance service. You can see how many deaths we've had in Sheboygan County and how many of them have been because of overdoses. When I began to do this study, I asked for information and found it to be unavailable. The only way I could get the information was to investigate and review each and every coroner's report from 2008 until March 15th of 2018. I've broken down the information I've obtained into different categories, and I've also included and attached a complete information I obtained throughout my research in its complete form. 
How many medical examination investigations were related to drug overdose? As you can see, how many were each year and how many were related to drug overdoses? 2015, we had 25. In 2017, we had 18. In 2018, and we're in the month of March, according to the coroner, we have nine. So we have half of what we had last year already this year. How many of the drug overdoses were accidental and how many were intentional? Intentional would be suicide. Accidental would be bad dope. And you can see the numbers here. And on the very last one for 2018, five were not intentional. That was an error. There were nine that were accidental, as far as I know, from the coroner because we haven't gotten the reports back. And our worst year was 2016. The next few slides or sheets are just, I broke down every year what city they happened in, how many happened, how many were intentional, how many were accidental in each county in Sheboygan, each city in Sheboygan and was all the way up to 2017. As I said, in 2018, I didn't have the coroner's reports to look at. I sat with the coroner and he told me how many we had this year and the reports weren't in the book yet. Then I wondered, is there an age group that's more affected by drug addiction and overdose? And you can clearly see there's not. So it's all the way up to 50s, 60s, one was 72. Then I wondered, was one marital status more affected by drug overdoses? It really isn't. Mostly single people overdose. But it really, it, it doesn't tell you. Does the time of year impact overdoses? Not so much. In 2015, we had five in September. Now in 2018, we're in March and we have nine already. So I don't know how that will play out. The next slide, do overdose deaths tend to be gender specific? Are there more men than female that commit suicide or using drug dose, overdose or just overdosing? It looks like males do it more than females, but it's, it's pretty even across the board. The rest of the sheets in your report, you'll find lists of all the drugs. And all these drugs that I have listed on this report were all drugs that were found in the toxicity reports on every single one of the um, coroner's reports. And then after you get to that, you're going to find the actual meat of this whole report. You'll see the date that it happened. I did not use anyone's name. There are numbers. And it'll all correlate if you're to go down to the county and sit and look at all the death certificates as to what case number they would be. And you can see how they've died. Last year we had two gunshot murders and they were drug, had to do with drugs as well. It goes on and on and on and on. So the information that I researched for years did not give me any answers or point me to any cause or cure. It just was very sad. It was probably the saddest thing that, excuse me, ever did. I was hoping that would give me insight on how to stop the addiction, and it just didn't. What I'm about to show you is a video of two actual drug overdoses and the information about drug overdosing. If you are faint of heart, do not watch this. There is cursing in it, so if you don't want little children to see this, please don't watch this report. And then I just have a small thing to say afterwards. Thank you. Oh, this is okay, this is for real. Honey! Thank you. 
Naloxone, generic equivalent to Narcan. Everybody calls it Narcan because uh, I'm more familiar. You see it in the movies. You see it. People talk about it on the street, but we distribute Naloxone, which is the same as Narcan, just generic and cheaper. Naloxone, it only works on opiates. Heroin. Morphine. Oxycontin. Percocet. Dilaudid. Vicodin. Methadone. Codeine. Norco. Not cocaine, not alcohol, none of those other things. But, taking the opiate out of the picture is always helpful. So even if somebody, if you think somebody's doing more than one substance, eliminating the opiate only could help. I remember the day that Mike told me he was an addict. He actually came home with a bottle of Narcan and told me what it was, told me how to use it, and I was glad because then I have the opportunity to actually use the Narcan and save his life. it up and he, he did his hit and then uh, I'm mixing up mine and I look over at him and he's like really knotted, really really fucked up so uh, I, I touch him and say okay he says yeah I'm alright and then a couple two minutes later same thing baby okay yeah he's, he's fine that's what he said and then I remember him just going backwards on that bed on the floor. And I just remember jumping across the table. I took my knuckles across his chest bone, across his lips, and he, he, nothing, no response. And when I got down to him, I could see his lips were blue. And I thought, oh shit, it is for real, he's dying. So, uh, so what, we flipped him on his side and uh, cleaned his, his mouth out, made sure he had nothing in his mouth, got him on his back, you know, tilted his head the way you're supposed to. I did two quick breaths like you're supposed to do into his mouth and I wasn't thinking straight so the air came right back out his nose because I forgot to pinch his nose. And so then I had to do it again, pinch his nose and two quick breaths. And they're like, you guys had to go get the Narcan. Right. Oh, okay, come on, man. Okay. Now we Finally, uh, we came back with a Narcan, and I threw it up and hit him with it. I was there breathing for him, and then when you guys ran back in, gave me the Narcan, I loaded up one CC, which is all you're really supposed to give him. 
you know, you can just go right through the clothing. So I did. I just hit him right in the in the upper arm, that muscle up there. And that was it, and then he took that big breath. Can you hear me? Oh, there he is, he's back from the dead. You just died, we had hit you with our kind. You wait, buddy? I remember we kept telling him what he already knew. Half an hour from now, that Narcan's going to wear off. Your high is going to come back. And in fact, your OD might come back, which is why like, you and I had to stay with him for a couple hours. Yeah. You stayed with him a long time. Oh, yeah. I married him. <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> I hit him, hit him once in the ass, and uh, it took about about three to five minutes, you know. And he took that big gasp of air, and once you hear that, you know it's it's going to be all good, from my experience anyway, you know. Where am I? What happened? What's going on? Where am I? I don't believe you. You fucking shot me with that shit and took all my dope away. Well, you know, I don't have fucking money to get another bag. Oh my god. I'm sick. I need another bag. Honey, I, we're off in 20 minutes. Yeah. The two people in the film that really overdosed was the first fellow and the gal that woke up pissed off that her high was gone. Those were actual overdoses. These addictions are epic proportions in a crisis in our country. If the number of overdose deaths were equated to the flu or any other medical problem, we would have <coughs> funding available and we'd be able to have help for these people. But because it's a drug problem, I don't think we're getting the help that we need. I can't tell you how many people have overdosed and lived. I cannot tell you how many people are drug users. I cannot tell you how many crimes have been committed because of drugs, and I wish I could tell you the solution. Together we can work towards the answers that work. Please tell me if this is going to happen one day or if this is going to be day one. Thanks. This is what Narcan looks like, by the way. I think our police and fire department use the spray one. They don't use the needle one. So I just wanted to bring awareness to everybody that we have an epidemic problem in our whole country and we have a problem in Sheboygan County, although we have a pretty good, pretty good um, police department that's handling along with our fire department. Our fire department um, distributed Narcon 39 times in 2007, 48 times in 2006, and 56 times in 2015. And now anyone can get Narcon at the pharmacy. So most drug users, when they're together and doing their drugs, someone has the Narcan. It's like a designated driver. Now we have a designated Narcan giver. 
So thanks so much for listening, and I appreciate it. Took a lot of my life to do this, but I'm glad I did. Thank you very much for sharing that information. Next, we'll go on to the mayor's announcements. I'd like to invite uh, Larry Helmer to join me up here at the podium. Officer Helmer is a Sheboygan native, a graduate of South High School. He earned his associate's degree in history from UW-Sheboygan, a bachelor's degree in history with a minor in economics, and a bachelor's degree in business administration from Lakeland College. After graduation from college, Larry had a strong interest in law enforcement, but was not eligible for employment as a police officer due to a, strike, uh, a site restriction that was in place at that time. Larry still chased his calling by volunteering to be an auxiliary officer with the Sheboygan Police Department for nine years. When the site requirements for police officers were changed, Larry applied for a police officer position. He could have looked elsewhere, but he was committed to working in Sheboygan. Larry graduated from the Recruit Academy at Lakeshore Technical Institute and was hired as a Sheboygan police officer on September 15th of 1986. As part of his duties, Larry was trained and certified as an emergency medical technician, an ambulance attendant, and worked on the ambulance when the police department provided ambulance service. He assisted in developing the mobile data terminal program for use in the Sheboygan Police Department and therefore could be uh, considered an early adopter in the information age. Throughout his career, Larry has maintained a professional image, a kind and courteous demeanor, and has taken pride in being knowledgeable about the neighborhoods he has been assigned to patrol. He's always first to work, regularly receives letters and notes of thanks from citizens, and never receives complaints. He takes great pride in serving the citizens of Sheboygan and being a member of the Sheboygan Police Department. After almost 32 years of service, Larry will be retiring on April 6th, and he plans to spend more time with his family, especially the two grandchildren that are here with him tonight. We share our congratulations on a job well done and wish him the best in retirement. Larry, if you want to just come around here, I'd like to present you the Certificate of Appreciation from the City of Sheboygan, and honored to present you uh, the Certificate for 31 years of dedicated service and an employee of the Sheboygan Police Department from September 15th of 1986 through April 6th of 2018. Congratulations, Larry, and all the best to you in your retirement. I would just like to say thank you to everyone. Uh, I enjoyed being a member of the Sheboygan Police Department. There's no other department I'd want to work for. Uh, there are so many great people with the department that I know will continue after me. Again, thank you very much. Well, yesterday was the spring election, and I want to thank the clerk's office, uh, the poll workers for their work to conduct the election yesterday. Uh, thanks to the candidates for their interest in serving uh, as an elected official, and my congratulations to the winners in the various races. This was a historic uh, election for the city of Sheboygan. It's the first time in well over half a century that the entire council has been up for election at one time. We've always had alternate uh, years with only half of the council up each year. And it's also historic due to, due to the fact that we're downsizing from the 16 to the 10 members. Um, I, I've also sent a preference survey out in the mail for all of the uh, elected alder persons. Um, I request that you return those, sur uh, those surveys by uh, April 10th, and then um, I'll be setting up interviews with each of you to go over your preferences as, as I prepare the appointments for the council meeting on April 17th. Uh, you have a document in blue on your desk uh, about the mayor's water challenge. This will be conducted during the month of April, and we're asking citizens to consider making a pledge to conserve water and energy use in their homes in conjunction with the Wayland Foundation and the Sheboygan Water Utility. There's a link to the water pledge on the banner ad on our city website. 
There's also a hazardous recycling date set up at Maywood on Saturday, April 14th from 8 o'clock until 11 o'clock. Fees will be charged to recycle various items. And for more information, you can see the city newsletter. And again, the Sheboygan uh, Insider newsletter is available on the city website. Next Tuesday, April 10th, is the deadline to register for the Landlord Training Program to be held on April 24th uh, from 5.30 to 9.30 at the Sheboygan Police Department. And on your desk, you have copies of the two developers' agreements for the armory that are being referred to finance and personnel, so you can study those. And you also have a copy of the borrowing resolution that is being referred as well for, your, for you to read over. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to the consent agenda. That'll include items 2.2 through 2.16. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for your motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? I'm sorry, Alderperson Donahue. Uh, and just briefly, um, uh, with respect to 2.10, I just wanted to, and I know we all thank uh, Plastics Engineering for their grants um, for three years in a row of $20,000 each year towards our 4th of July uh, celebration, and I just think that's a wonderful contribution from a, a corporate citizen. Thank you for those comments. Yeah. Alderperson Warren, did you have oh, no. Okay. The clerk, please call the roll. <coughs> Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, item 3.1 through 3.6 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, items 4.1 through 4.7 will again be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 5.1 is RC number 264 of 1718 by the Public Works Committee, to whom is referred resolution number 161 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into contract with PTS Contractors Incorporated for the South Point Enterprise Campus for $10,528,444.15 and recommends that the attached substitute resolution be passed. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I, may, uh, I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass res uh, the substitute resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Other person holds you. I wonder if someone could just explain it so that people who are listening understand what this um, is for the South Point Enterprise Campus. If someone could. The South, Chad, would you like to come forward? So that there's a, everyone understands. <laughs> So as you recall, last, late last year, we bought land on South Business Drive from Wilson Land Holdings and Alliant Energy, um, about 110 acres or so. Um, we already own some property down there known as a compost site of about 57 acres. So phase one is to install the uh, utilities and roads related to uh, developing that out to a new business center. So the new business center's name is going to be South Point Enterprise Campus. And um, the bid estimate in the TIF plan late last year was about $14.8 million. The bids came in at $10.5 million, so it's about $4 million less than what was anticipated. Um, the contractors from Green Bay, this will get basically the site ready um, with roads, utilities, and grading. Um, this will be borrowed money through TID 18 paid back from increment generated from new development in that park. This is phase one of the project. Phase two of the project is to ultimately connect 
South Taylor Drive with where South Taylor ends today through a property known as the Berkey property. Um, and those negotiations, there's a document later on in the agreement, but those negotiations are continuing for ultimately um, an expansion of this to about 400 acres um, long term. But right now it gives us the opportunity of about 130 to 40 acres to develop um, when this project is done later this year. Thank you, Chad. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 265 of 1718 by the Public Works Committee, to whom was referred uh, direct referral resolution number 162 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract with Quashes Construction of Sheboygan, Wisconsin, uh, for the City Hall renovation project for $8,994,199 and recommends passing the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. We had uh, three bids on this City Hall project, and uh, I was glad to see that a local firm, Quash, has got it and Second was Joe Schmidt and Sons, but I'm glad to see that this contract goes to a local business. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is RC number 266 of 1718 by the Public Works Committee, to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 163 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into a contract for the removal and disposal of all asbestos containing materials from City Hall and the City Hall garage in preparation for the City Hall renovation project and recommends that the attached substitute resolution be passed. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass substitute resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in looking at this at finance and personnel, there were six bids that our purchasing agent, Bernie Rahmer, got uh, all for the bid that was accepted for around $60,000 up to around $240,000. So I was glad to see that there were six bids, and uh, I think Bernie did an outstanding job in acquiring these bids. And with that range, we're very fortunate to have this done for $60,000. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Thirteen eyes. Motion passes. Um, items 5.4 through 5.29 are all uh, claims or, or legal things that are going to be referred to various committees of the new council. Under general ordinances, item 6.1 is general ordinance 41 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf, placing a stop sign at the southwest corner of North 25th Street and Pennsylvania Avenue. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we're looking to suspend and pass this ordinance uh, due to already um, having been approved uh, through the committee level. Is there so, any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. So we're looking to pass the ordinance. Uh, there's no need for this to go back to uh, committee. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion, Alderperson Sorensen. Um, 
I'm just kind of curious, um, has, has there been discussion from neighbors um, for the purpose of their stop sign? Has this been a busy intersection? I'm not too familiar with North 25th and Pennsylvania Avenue. Just a little thinking about that. I'm curious. Alderperson Savaglio. I can shed a little bit of light on that. Um, I've heard from numerous neighbors through canvassing that uh, that is a, a site for, of several accidents over the past few years. It's uncontrolled now, and it's a, a three-way intersection uh, with, with no, no control. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Nice. Motion passes. Items 6.2 through 6.4 will be referred to the Public Works Committee. Uh, then next is other matters uh, after the agenda was published. City Attorney. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, 7.1 is a resolution by Alderpersons Donahue and Boren providing for the sale of general obligation promissory notes and bond anticipation notes for 2018 capital projects. Uh, that will be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. 7.2 is a resolution by Alderperson Wolf uh, declaring the official intent to reimburse expenditures from proceeds of borrowing. That will be referred to the uh, Public Works Committee. 7.3 is a resolution by Alderpersons Donahue and Wolf authorizing demolition of the Sheboygan Armory, provision to return the site in its entirety to green space, and allowance for further development opportunities that may present in the future. That will be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. 7.4 is a resolution by Alderpersons Donahue and Boren approving the terms and conditions of the contract for sale of land for private development between the City of Sheboygan and Scott Crawford, Inc. for a project on the Armory site, which will be a mixed-use building comprised of retail commercial space and market rate and affordable residential apartments. Tonight we have some representatives of Scott Crawford, Inc. with us. And um, in the past, they haven't been able to uh, participate in the public forum. And so I'd like to give them an opportunity to come to the podium and explain a little bit about their project. Uh, good evening, everyone. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I haven't got a chance to uh, speak before, so I just want to give a little background about myself. Uh, again, my name is Q Elamine. I'm a Milwaukee native, and my first uh, experience in Sheboygan was actually coming up playing basketball. Uh, we used to always scrimmage Sheboygan North before the season started, and they used to always beat us really badly. They had a very good press that they used to put on, and I could count for a couple of turnovers uh, going with their press. But since that time, I uh, graduated of the University of Wisconsin-Madison, uh, then went on to get my master's degree at Chicago State University in geography. And I started in real estate in 2006. I started with doing uh, smaller developments, and those were like single-family homes. It was the height of the market during that time. I kind of rode the wave until it went down. Uh, that's when I went back and got my master's degree. I started another company called Young Enterprise Society, which uh, teaches uh, entrepreneurship based on science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. All of you guys have seen uh, my proposal and what it uh, includes, but I just want to give you a couple updates uh, since the original proposal. Uh, one thing that we did is we did reduce the amount of TIF that was asked to uh, 1.7 million. Uh, additionally, we increased the affordability, so now we have 50% market rate units and 50% affordable units. Additionally, we reduced the flex space, which was uh, originally retail. Everyone said we don't need retail down there, so we did reduce that from about 9,000 square feet to uh, 2,400 square feet. And uh, we also obtained a market analysis from Baker Tilly, which is a accounting firm, uh, showing the need for more affordable and market rate housing in Sheboygan. And with these units coming on in two years, it'll be uh, a need for that during that time. 
So that's what I've been working on. At the, the April 9th meeting, I'll be able to bring my whole team uh, with me. Also, my uh, co-developer, which is Sanair, uh, Chris Laurent, who I'm working with, uh, Green Fire Construction, and uh, the whole uh, gambit. So you'll be able to hear from them and seeing that I wrap myself with a strong team along the way. So again, I just want to say thank you guys for the opportunity uh, to at least present the RFP uh, here in Sheboygan. And any questions, you know, please let me know. We've got a couple of co questions. First of all, Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, could you please just for the audience uh, explain the definition of market rate? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so market rate units is uh, <laughs> units that are just a general whatever, whatever accounting firm says the price and the market can handle, then that's the price is set. Affordable is a price that is set uh, based upon the county median income. Would you be able to maybe give an example of what market rate would be for this, uh, for this model? Yes, so we're looking at uh, one bedroom units uh, starting at about $1,100, $1,200 uh, for a one bedroom. Okay, thank you. Uh, Alder Person Boren. <clears throat> Uh, thank you for your, your comments tonight. I do have something that's going to be helpful, uh, would be helpful for me uh, Monday night. I'm on the Finance and Personnel Committee, and that is with your blend of market rate and uh, uh, lower, lower rent apartments. Uh, what, what I'm going to need uh, is I'm going to need something from a financial institution, your bank, saying that that mix of 50-50 is going to be all right for you to get the loan that you're requiring. I believe it was $12 million. Is that right in the proposal? Yes. And, and I believe in your original packet of information, there was a letter from a bank of interest. But my concern is with that mix of 50-50, whether that bank is still in, in, uh, interested and if they can give you a little more firm commitment on whether you're going to be able to get the loan, that would be very helpful to me on Monday. OK. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Alderperson Holshue. Thank you. Um, conventional property is, is not governed by anything other than market, and market in Sheboygan for a one bedroom is in $1,100. It's much less than that. But affordable rate housing ex is subsidized housing, is WIDA projects, is federal funded projects, correct? So, so you want to mix low income with conventional? <laughs> On one site. If if you look at the the units that are in uh, other cities, such as downtown Milwaukee, which the rental market are, is higher, it is it's affordable. It's not subsidized housing, so the government does not pay a monthly subsidy to the rent to to lower the rent. It's a tax credit model where tax credits are used to finance the project, so it's a set amount. So we, currently, it's at sixty percent of the county median income which is a right around $30,000. So it'd be people that, that'll make starting at $30,000. If you have more than one person in the household, that goes up. So you don't have to have a job. You don't have to have a decent job to have these. So it's not, it's not your, I, I see your face, it's not your 30% income levels, it's your 60% income levels that would be included at the, uh, on the site. So you're saying they're tax credit property then? It, it, like Sunnyside Townhome, this is a tax credit property. I, I don't know what Sunny Sound Town Homes, but if you look at, and you can write this down, uh, the North End in downtown Milwaukee is a good example of an affordable, uh, of a, a mix with affordable and market rate. And you see that as kind of mandated all over the country right now. I'd be curious to see your financials that, that they'd be willing to mix those two tax credit as well as conventional. And then I'm wondering if, if as, as um, Alderman Bourne has asked me to bring that, if you would bring your um, experiences and references for all the developments that you personally have been involved in. Yes. That would be beneficial to read that. Not flips of houses, but developments. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for those questions. Alderperson Sorensen. Pass. <clears throat> Pass? Yeah. Alderperson Donahue. I think it is important, at least from the preliminary materials that I read, to understand that affordable housing may start at 30,000, but the typical range of income of people living in affordable housing is 35 to $45,000 a year. I'm afraid we've started to demonize the project in some respects by saying that poor people are going to be moving in. I object to the demonization of low-income people 
in any context, but in any event, it's not applicable for this project. And I, I think we just need to keep that in mind. And for any alarms that have been sounded by caravans of low-income people moving into the neighborhood, I object to that concept. But in any event, uh, that's, not, uh, that's really not what's going to be happening. And so I, I just think that we need to, to kind of keep that in mind. Um, and then with respect to Alder Holshue's request, um, I guess it would be helpful for me to know uh, as I analyze Mr. Amin's team, um, whether we have ever used this team concept before in terms of developing uh, projects uh, within the city. Or have we in the past only hired one contractor who does not work with anybody else? He might hire an architect or something like that. Uh, just so we can keep that in context, I understand that Mr. Amin has a fairly extensive team of people that he is working with. If that's highly unusual, I think we should know about it. If it's a kind of common course of business, I think that would be helpful to our analysis as well. Thank you for your comments. And thank you very much for your presentation. So this document, we got, I'm sorry, Alderperson Sorensen? Yes, my question is regarding 7.3. I'm just curious. I know at a few meetings ago, we kind of were whittling down and, and working on 7.4 and 7.5. I think the council agreed upon that we were focusing, uh, working with the Scott Crawford Group and the Army uh, Community Project. I'm curious, and if someone can explain to me how 7.3 kind of came up to fruition and why this is being kind of discussed as an option. I thought we were moving down the ways of just two proposals and not a third one popping up again, or a fourth one, however you interpret it. But. Alder Person Donahue. Um, thank you for the opportunity to explain. Um, I think we can all agree that this has been a fairly tough decision-making process. And for the Alders who will be leaving the council, know that you will leave having made a decision. So I think, you know, that's good. That's good news. Um, I have had substantial concerns about the viability of both projects, quite frankly. I think the Armory project is in a good position to refurbish the Armory, and uh, we will then have a building that will be underutilized. It will be protected by uh, National Historic Registry uh, designation, which will make it very difficult for the city to attempt to do something new with the building. Uh, it has many pluses. It has some very significant minuses. And I think the same thing happens with the Scott Crawford proposal. It is putting, as I view from the drawings, 10 pounds of apartments in a five pound parcel. And I just don't like the way it looks. Um, I don't have the concerns that other uh, council members have uh, expressed, particularly after I read the proposal that was sent to us. It's clear to me that Mr. Uh, El Amin has a very sophisticated and competent group of people that he's working with. But nonetheless, I just don't know. And um, I usually don't have trouble making decisions, but uh, the decision that I was made was to give us another alternative, which is to tear the building <coughs> down. We have approved that. Um, we have a contract for demolition smooth it over, make it look like the Field of Dreams, right? Just a big green field with, <laughs> right, it could be like the Field of, you know, a big green space with grass and nothing more, but then to encourage developers who may decide to come in and present proposals that we may want to consider. We may want to always leave it as a green space, I don't think so, but my idea was that if, if a majority of us can't agree on one or the other, then this is a possible way of dealing with the issue. Now, it may be on April 16th that one proposal or the other passes with flying colors, and then obviously this one isn't needed. But that was my thinking. Um, I discussed it with uh, Alder Wolf, and we agreed that this would be a place for the council to find some rest, <laughs> if nothing else, if we uh, are not successful in making a decision. Any other discussion? Can I ask a follow-up question? Alder person. Uh, um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Chairwoman Donahue, I'm wondering if you could just kind of explain your process or your thinking about how 
um, the committee is going to kind of operate on Monday. Is the committee going to make a one recommendation? <coughs> Or are you guys going to come back with all three proposals? What, what are you hoping to bring back to the council? I think all three proposals will come to finance and personnel. Um, it was uh, my thought that, uh, my, <laughs> that my resolution would come first, but it doesn't need to. Um, and uh, if it is forwarded to, remembering that no matter what finance and personnel decides, ultimately it's the decision of the council. And so if there is, a majority vote for the Armory project or a majority vote for the Crawford project, then, then this resolution is, 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 uh, is not necessary. So, um, so I'm, that's my thought on how it would proceed. Are you finished, Alderperson? I'm going to ask one final question. And I await it. Um, <laughs> uh, I, 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 that, that, was, that wasn't the, the answer I wanted. So I'm going to ask. You want to know which one comes first? No. Are you going to bring us one proposal or all three? Oh, no, all three come to the committee. Oh, I'm sorry. Back to the council. So once it, these, these are getting referred tonight. So Monday you guys are having your meeting. Is the committee going to decide one or are they going to bring three proposals back to oh, us? Oh, I think we need to make a decision on all three proposals. From the committee And level. it might be like a 5-0 or a 4-1 on the Armory Project or on, on uh, my proposal. Um, the council will have the advantage of the thinking of the Finance and Personnel Committee, but ultimately, of course, on the 16th, it's the council's decision. Okay. Thank you. Okay, then Alderperson Damro. Thanks for waiting. All right, I just have a quick question. Um, so I was under the understanding that um, the Armory Community Project could only speak during finance. Why aren't they speaking tonight? We only heard from one. I'm sorry? Why were they not invited to speak like the other option? Well, uh, the, the thing that was brought to me is the, uh, this proposal hasn't had a chance uh, to present during the public forum in the past because all five spots have been filled by, um, well, they had a chance. by, they by city up. residents. And so somebody who doesn't live in the city can't, uh, even though he's signed up, they get bumped. I understand that, but that's, that's public forum. That is not what you offered them tonight, and they didn't get an invitation to speak. Well, I chose to allow them to, to give a presentation to even the playing field so we have a chance to ask some questions. I think we had some good questions tonight, and hopefully this will make for a better decision at both the uh, finance and personnel and common council. But you're not answering my question. When they, do, when they speak for public forum, they're limited to five minutes. That was more than five minutes. So why isn't it being treated equal? There were several public forums, but the, I know, the administrator but they weren't, would like they to weren't. respond. I'd like to turn it over to the administrator. This may shed some light. Uh, the Armory Community Project, Inc. were also invited, and we're told that they would be given an opportunity to speak as well. That is not true. That I, I have an email I can share. Uh, I can share the emails where they were invited. Sure. Okay, with uh, no other discussion, uh, 7.4 we referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. City Attorney. 7.5 is a resolution approving the terms and conditions of the redevelopment agreement between the Armory Community Project, Inc. and the City of Sheboygan for a project involving rehabilitating the municipal auditorium and armory and repurposing it into a community center. Refer also referred to Finance and Personnel Committee. 7.6 is a resolution by all the persons Donahue and Boren authorizing the purchase of approximately 0.83 acres land and building located on the northern portion of 1211 North 23rd Street for future use by the city. Also referred to Finance and Personnel Committee. 7.7 .7 is an RO uh, by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2018, December 31, 2018, April 4, 2019, and June 30, 2019. That will be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. 7.8 is a, uh, uh, an appointment being submitted by the Mayor for your consideration. Uh, Andy Ross to be considered for appointment to the Board of Review to fill the unexpired term of Pete Fullerton, whose term expires April 25, 2021. That will lie over. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We stand adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight.